expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Greek ebook before it's gone. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. 
For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Συγγνώμη κυρία, εδώ είναι δύο γραμμές αλλά μόνο μια πλατφόρμα. Είναι μια γραμμή για το μετρό και μια για τον προαστιακό σιδηρόδρομο. Οπότε, μόνο μια πλατφόρμα και για τα δύο τρένα. Ναι, ένα σταθμός, μια πλατφόρμα, δύο τρένα. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Συγγνώμη. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. Κυρία. Madam. Γραμμές. Tracks. Lines. Αλλά. But. Μόνο. Only. Μια. One. Πλατφόρμα. Platform. Τρένο. Train. Σταθμός. Station. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Συγγνώμη, κυρία. Εδώ είναι δύο γραμμές, αλλά μόνο μια πλατφόρμα. Είναι μια γραμμή για το μετρό και μια για τον προαστιακό σιδηρόδρομο. Οπότε, μόνο μια πλατφόρμα και για τα δύο τρένα. Ναι, ένα σταθμός, μια πλατφόρμα, δύο τρένα. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of GreekPod 101, how to learn Greek. Today we'll have a classroom about phrases for surviving back to school. A little crazy. But anyway, this is the lesson for today. 10 phrases for surviving back to school. I don't get this. How we will survive back to school? How anyone can survive back to school? Anyhow, I should stop drinking coffee. Eh? Very hyper today. Let's start. Number one. Saikidio. Backpack. Σακίδιο. Backpack. Κάθε χρόνο 
Της αρέσει να έχει καινούριο σακίδιο για το σχολείο. Every year she likes to have a new backpack for the school. Everyone likes to have a new backpack. Even me that I'm not going to the school, I want every three months to change backpack. It's normal thing. It's not only for the school. Συμμαθητής. Classmate. Συμμαθητής. Classmate. Ποιοι από τους συμμαθητές σου θα πάνε στο πάρτι? Which classmates of yours are going to the party? Important question. Remember it in Greek. Μαθήματα. Homework. Μαθήματα. Homework. A lot of homework. Έχεις κάνει τα μαθήματά σου. Have you done your homework? This question I really hate it. I always was hearing for 20 years. Have you done? Have you done? Anyway, I always did my homework. And I'm still doing my homework. Hope you do also and learn fast the Greek language so to communicate easier. Εξέταση. Εξάμ. Εξέταση. Εξάμ. Οι εξετάσεις του πρώτου τριμήνου θα γίνουν τον Νοέμβριο. The exams of the first trimester will take place in November. Every three months we have exams. And every six months we have the major exams. And every year we have the crucial exams. So remember this. Εξέταση. Plural, εξετάσεις. Καλοκαιρινές διακοπές. Summer break. Oh, my favorite. Καλοκαιρινές διακοπές. Summer break. This is also a song in Greece, by the way. Επιστροφή στο σχολείο μετά τις καλοκαιρινές διακοπές είναι πάντα δύσκολη. The return to school after the summer break is always difficult. I know what to do. Σχολείο. School. Σχολείο. School. You can guess. It's easy. Το σχολείο χρειάζεται καλύτερο εξοπλισμό για το χημείο. The school needs better equipment for the chemistry lab. Of course it needs. Every school needs for the physics, for the mathematician and for the chemistry. Every year they have to renew. Σπουδάζω. To study. Σπουδάζω. To study. Σκέφτεται να σπουδάσει διοίκηση επιχειρήσεων. She is thinking of studying business management. This is what I'm doing. Business management. Especially in touristic um, sector. Είμαστε στην ίδια τάξη. We are in the same class. Είμαστε στην ίδια τάξη. We are in the same class, not for long. If you don't pass the exams, you will not be in the same class. Ποια μαθήματα παρακολουθείς? What classes are you taking? Ποια μαθήματα παρακολουθείς? What classes are you taking? And you answer, none of your business. This is rude, eh? very rude. Don't do this. Τελείωσες τα μαθήματά σου? Did you finish your homework? Τελείωσες τα μαθήματά σου. Did you finish your homework? This is a rhetorical question that's happening from your parents. So be aware what you will answer. Eh? <laughs> It's a rhetorical question. This is it for today. Hope you enjoy the classroom. For more Greek lessons, subscribe on greekpod101.com and see you soon with more interesting lessons. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye. Ah, it's getting hot. It's getting really hot. Really, really hot. What is the next gift ideas you must know in Greek? Yes. Gift. Laptop, mobile, camera, microphone, stand this, stand that. <laughs> The cable is still there. It's really annoying. I have told them three times to change it, to put it under the ground. Inshallah. With God's will. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to another video of GreekPod101.com Today we'll talk about gift ideas you must know in Greek and you have to learn in Greek if you want to have... To have what? <laughs> Why I lose this? <laughs> to have good friends around you <laughs> and happy friends Φορητός υπολογιστής Laptop Gift idea number one, a φορητός υπολογιστής. A laptop is the always a good idea for gift. A Dell XPS 15 inches is perfect. i7 quad core, 6, uh, no, 8 GB RAM, SSD hard disk, magnifique. Δεν ταξιδεύω ποτέ χωρίς τον φορητό μου υπολογιστή. I never travel without my laptop. Me neither. Me neither. I cannot survive with my laptop kit. Βιβλίο. Book. Βιβλίο. Book. Ποιο είναι το καλύτερο βιβλίο που έχεις διαβάσει ποτέ? What's the best book you have ever read? It's always the best idea to give a book for a gift. It's the best idea. Trust me, 
if you care about someone, make a book for a gift. Make a gift. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have lost my words. It's because I'm getting hot now. Make uh, as a gift. Make a book. Make a book as a gift. <laughs> Παγκόσμιος χάρτης, world map, παγκόσμιος χάρτης, world map. Στη τάξη μέσα υπάρχει ένας παγκόσμιος χάρτης δίπλα από τον πίνακα. In the classroom there is a world map next to the blackboard. Yeah, there is always in every classroom a world map. I remember since I was this height. Φωτογραφική μηχανή. Κάμερα. Φωτογραφική μηχανή. Κάμερα. Μαζεύει λεφτά για να αγοράσει μια επαγγελματική φωτογραφική μηχανή. He is saving money to buy a professional photo camera. Έξυπνο τηλέφωνο smartphone. Έξυπνο τηλέφωνο smartphone. Mobile. Κινητό. It's the same thing. Η έρευνα δείχνει πως τα έξυπνα τηλέφωνα αποσπούν την προσοχή μας κατά την οδήγηση. The research shows that smartphones distract us while driving. And this is true, so don't use smartphones when you are driving. Κινητό is the common word that we use for mobiles and smartphones, so κινητό is better. Κονσόλα παιχνιδιών. Game console. Κονσόλα παιχνιδιών. Game console. Λέω να πουλήσω όλες τις παλιές κονσόλες παιχνιδιών που έχω. I'm thinking of selling all the old game consoles that I have. I'm thinking also to do this, really. I have Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1. This is for Neanderthal, you know. <laughs> Λεξικό. Dictionary. Λεξικό. Dictionary. Μπορείτε να μου προτείνετε ένα καλό ετυμολογικό λεξικό. Could you suggest me a good etymological dictionary? You see, a lot of words in Latin are Greeks. Ετυμολογικό, etymological, so you have to learn Greek. Πτήση για Ελλάδα. A flight to Greece. Πτήση για Ελλάδα. A flight to Greece. This is the first thing you need to come here to meet me in person and to teach you Greek in person. You need a ptisi to Greece. Πότε είναι η ptisi σου για Ελλάδα? When is your flight to Greece? Let me know on the comments below. Θεραπεία σε σπα. Spa treatment. Θεραπεία σε σπα. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. Θεραπεία σε σπα. Spa treatment. Μου χάρισε ένα κουπόνι για μια δωρεάν θεραπεία σε σπα. He gave me a coupon for a free spa treatment. I really love this kind of gifts. You have to put this on the gift section. It's amazing. Κόσμημα. Jewelry. Κόσμημα. Jewelry. Στις γυναίκες συνήθως αρέσουν τα κοσμήματα. Women usually like jewelry. So for the women you know what to give. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoy the video. If you want to learn more, subscribe on GreekPod101.com and see you soon with more videos. Take care. Bye. What's going on with my English? It's something with the ginkgo biloba and the coffee and the tribulus, everything. The herbs are very powerful. <laughs> I have... I have... Uh, how's that called? No, cut it. Cut it. Hi everyone, this is Stefania. Welcome to another Greek Top Words video. In this video, you'll learn 10 phrases you never want to hear. These are the kind of phrases that probably tick you off and make you roll your eyes so much that they'll end up behind your neck, reach your back and maybe they'll keep rolling and leave the room. Okay, that was too much. Without further ado, here are the 10 phrases you never want to hear. Έχεις πάρει κιλά τώρα τελευταία? Have you gained weight recently? Έχεις πάρει κιλά τώρα τελευταία? Have you gained weight recently? 
Some things are better left unsaid, and that's one of them. Έχεις μια άσπρη τρίχα. You have a gray hair. Έχεις μια άσπρη τρίχα. You have a gray hair. It's comments like this that make you feel so old. But you shouldn't, because deep down inside, you're young at heart. Everyone is young at heart, right? It's just one white hair. It doesn't mean anything. It means you're getting wiser, right? Hmm? You're getting wiser. It's all about perspective, I guess. Next. Sutoipa. I told you so. Sutoipa. I told you so. This can also be pronounced stopa with the pronoun su and the verb form ipa contracted. To further complement this variety, this phrase can also come in a wide variety of voice tones, each more annoying than the other. Suto ipa. Suto ipa. Suto ipa. Stopa. Apoliese. You're fired. And this is the absolute worst, I think. Apoliese. You're fired. This also comes in a variety of voice tones depending on how much you've angered your boss. Apoliese. 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 Δεν έχει να κάνει με σένα. Έχει να κάνει με μένα. It's not you. It is me. Δεν έχει να κάνει με σένα. Έχει να κάνει με μένα. It's not you. It is me. Okay, breaking up sucks. So does this line. I think most of the times, uh, not always of course, people mean exactly the opposite. But use this line in order not to hurt the other person, which is considered of course, but not too honest. Σας ευχαριστούμε για το βιογραφικό σας. Η θέση όμως έχει καταληφθεί. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Σας ευχαριστούμε για το βιογραφικό σας. Η θέση όμως έχει καταληφθεί. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Here, the word βιογραφικό sounds similar to the word βιογραφία, which means biography. So don't confuse the two. Βιογραφικό refers only to a resume. Πρέπει να αρχίσουμε να βγαίνουμε με άλλους. We should see other people. Πρέπει να αρχίσουμε να βγαίνουμε με άλλους. We should see other people. Literally, we should start dating other people. Another breakup line you don't want to hear. Or maybe you do. If you're not happy in a relationship, it could work both ways. Δεν έχω τα λεφτά σου σήμερα. I don't have your money today. Δεν έχω τα λεφτά σου σήμερα. I don't have your money today. Show me the money! It's from Jerry Maguire. <laughs> I love that Jerry Maguire scene with Tom Cruise. Show me the money! Show me the money! Πρέπει να μιλήσουμε. We have to talk. Πρέπει να μιλήσουμε. We need to talk. That always smells like trouble ahead. It's definitely not talking about what's for dinner tonight. So if you hear it, καλή Good luck. Συγγνώμη, το ξέχασα. Sorry, I forgot it. Συγγνώμη, το ξέχασα. Sorry, I forgot. In very casual situations, Greeks also say sorry instead of συγγνώμη. Sorry. Oops, sorry. Sorry, το ξέχασα. Use sorry only with friends and family. Otherwise, go for the safest option. Signomi. Signomi. Το ξέχασα. You've reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Can you think of some other phrases that you don't want to hear? You can leave them in the comments below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, check out greekpod101.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Γεια χαρά! Oh, η πρώην κοπέλα μου! Α, Πέτρο, είσαι καλά? Ναι, είμαι καλά. Αυτή είναι η κοπέλα μου η Έλλη. Είναι από την Καλαμάτα. Ωραία. Χαίρο πολύ. Είστε εδώ για διακοπές. Ναι. Πέτρο, είμαι κουρασμένη. Πάμε στο ξενοδοχείο. Ναι, πάμε. Περίμενε. Αυτό είναι το τηλέφωνο μου. 
Εντάξει. Και το κινητό μου είναι 6-9-3-2-5-5-5-9-1-0. Ωραία. Είναι εύκολο. 6-9-3-2-3 φορές. Το 5-9-1-0. Ευχαριστώ. Ποιο είναι το τηλέφωνο σου? Δεν το θυμάμαι. Λυπάμαι. Πάμε. Παρακαλώ. Μία πορτοκαλάδα, παρακαλώ. Εγώ θέλω ένα νερό. Αυτά είναι όλα? Ναι. Βεβαίως. Ορίστε η πορτοκαλάδα, το νερό και ο λογαριασμός. Ζέστη, ε. Ναι, κάνει πολύ ζέστη. Μου αρέσει η ζέστη. Στη Γερμανία βρέχει τώρα και κάνει κρύο. Είσαι από τη Γερμανία. Ναι, από το Βερολίνο. Με λένε Αντρέα. Χαίρο πολύ, Αντρέα. Εγώ είμαι η Έλλη. Και εγώ είμαι ο Πέτρος. Χαίρο πολύ. Είστε από την Αθήνα. Όχι, κάνουμε διακοπές εδώ. Τι δουλειά κάνετε. Εγώ δουλεύω ως δάσκαλος. Η Έλλη σπουδάζει ακόμα. Πέτρος Αντωνίου. Ένα δίκλινο, παρακαλώ. Βεβαίως, Αντωνίου. Λυπάμαι. Δεν βλέπω την κράτησή σας. Περίεργο. Ναι, λυπάμε πολύ. Θέλετε ένα δίκλινο. Ναι, θέλουμε ένα δίκλινο για μία εβδομάδα. Έχετε. Έχουμε άλλο ένα δίκλινο, το εννιά. Έχει ζεστό νερό. Βεβαίως. Έχει ζεστό νερό, κλιματιστικό, τηλεόραση και μίνι μπαρ. Πόσο κάνει? 50 ευρώ. Hey guys, Stefania here with another Top Words video. Our topic today is 10 Greek foods. Are you ready? Let's start. Ελαιόλαδο. Ελαιόλαδο. Olive oil. Ελαιόλαδο. Olive oil. Οι Έλληνες χρησιμοποιούν πολύ ελαιόλαδο στα φαγητά τους. Οι Έλληνες χρησιμοποιούν πολύ Ελαιόλαδο στα φαγητά τους. Greeks use a lot of olive oil in their food. And that's true. We are not stingy with the olive oil. When we pour olive oil to a pot when cooking or to a salad, we pour and pour and pour. That's why many people buy 5 liter tin cans to stock up. Or they use the olive oil they produce themselves uh, from the olive trees they own back in their village. It's not uncommon for someone to own a large plot of land with olives. Uh, back in some village. Ella calamon. Ella calamon. Calamata olive. Ella calamon. Calamata olive. Mu aresi na gorazo elles calamon hima. Mu aresi na agorazo elles calamon hima. I like to buy calamata olives in bulk. In Greece, you can go to any supermarket and just like there will be a section of the cold cuts or cheese with a counter and some person behind it to slice things for you. You will also find a section for olives where you can select the variety you want and buy by the kilo. Meli. Meli. Honey. Meli. Honey. Κάθε πρωί τρώψω με μελι. Κάθε πρωί. Τρώ ψωμί με μέλι. Every morning I eat bread with honey. Oh, the Greek honey. There are so many varieties that you can find in farmer's markets, like uh, thyme honey, floral honey, fir honey, pine honey, orange blossom honey, chestnut blossom honey, and more. Greeks are also one of the most heavy consumers of honey worldwide. Moussakas. Μουσακάς. Μουσάκα. Μουσακάς. Μουσάκα. Ο μουσακάς θέλει πολλή ώρα για να φτιαχτεί. Ο μουσακάς θέλει πολλή ώρα για να φτιαχτεί. 
It takes a long time to make moussaka, and that's true. Moussaka, or moussakas, as we say in Greek, requires a lot of preparation time. You have to cook all the ingredients separately, then put them together and bake them. You have to shallow fry the potatoes, then the zucchini, then the eggplant, uh, with some people let rest in salt for 30 minutes before frying them. So the bitter juices go away. Um, then you have to make the meat sauce, which is something like bolognese sauce. Then you have to make the bechamel sauce and then lay each ingredient uh, in layers inside a big oven tray and then bake the whole thing. And before you serve, you have to let it cool. Otherwise, the bechamel won't be firm and your pieces will just be collapsing. When you eat moussaka in Greece, you have to appreciate the hard work of the chef. Souvlaki. 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 Σήμερα βαριέμαι να μαγειρέψω, οπότε απόψε θα παραγγείλουμε σουβλάκια. Σήμερα βαριέμαι να μαγειρέψω, οπότε απόψε θα παραγγείλουμε σουβλάκια. Today I'm too bored to cook, so tonight we'll order σουβλάκια. Another favorite treat of mine, σουβλάκι. Now here's what you need to know about σουβλάκι. In Athens, a souvlaki is a pita wrap with meat in it. The meat inside the pita can be gyros, which you've seen spelled as gyros with a G, and is basically sliced pork or chicken meat. Or it can be skewered meat that is placed inside the pita and then the wooden skewer gets pulled out. That skewered meat, which you can also eat it without a pita, is called kalamaki in Athens, okay? So a souvlaki in Athens may be pita gyro, as we call it, or pita kalamaki. Now, in Thessaloniki, the terms are not being used the same way. If you go to Thessaloniki and ask for a souvlaki, you will not get a wrap. You will only get a meat skewer. That's because souvlaki, from a language point of view, is a diminutive form of souvla, which is a spit where skewered meat gets roasted in. So, souvlaki is a small stick with meat, not a wrap with pita and meat. The term kalamaki for Thessalonikians is nothing but a plastic straw to drink. So in Thessaloniki, asking a souvlaki with a kalamaki will get you a meat skewer and a plastic straw. So when in Thessaloniki, if you want the whole wrap thing, ask for pita me gyro, or simply pito gyro, or pita me souvlaki. This term differences are reasons of epic arguments between Athenians and Thessalonikians, with Athenians defending the term kalamaki not as the word for straw, but as the diminutive of the word kalami, which refers to reed, the plant. So, a small reed, a kalamaki, is a little stick where you skewer the meat. From my point of view, and although I'm from Piraeus, um, where we follow the Athenian terminology when it comes to this popular food, I think both arguments are valid about kalamaki. But about the term of souvlaki, I have to admit that it makes more sense to consider it as a skewered meat only, as my fellow Thessalonikians rightfully do. That's also what dictionaries say. The Greek language, as all languages, adapts to the place, the people, the time and conditions, so we should all accept how the language involved in each place, rather than fight about it. So there are different terms used in different cities. Now let's move on. Spanakopita. Spanakopita. Spinach pie. Spanakopita. Spinach pie. Ποιος έφαγε τη σπανακόπιτά μου? Ποιος έφαγε τη σπανακόπιτά μου? Who ate my spinach pie? Not cool. Don't eat other people's food. Τζατζίκι. 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 Μία πίτα γύρω με απ' όλα χωρίς τζατζίκι παρακαλώ. Μία πίτα γύρω με απόλα χωρίς τζατζίκι, παρακαλώ. A pita with gyro and everything in it, except tzatziki, please. That's a very common way to ask for a pita with gyros. Tzatziki is a yogurt-based sauce with lots of garlic. Many people like it, but some people avoid it when they want to maintain a fresh breath. Tiropita. Tiropita. 
Da. Cheese pie. Tiropita. Cheese pie. Pio tiri ehis vali se aftin tin tiropita. Which cheese have you used in this cheese pie? In Greece, there are a lot of cheese pie varieties. The cheese used can be feta, caseri, emmendal, and there are more cheeses. Uh, but we also have uh, a few different pastries, like it can be filo pastry or short crust pastry, which we call kuru. Fasolada. Fasolada. Greek bean soup. Fasolada. Greek bean soup. Tin kathara deftera trome panda fasolada. Tin kathara deftera trome panda fasolada. On Clean Monday, we always eat Greek bean soup. Clean Monday is a public holiday that marks the beginning of the Lent period before Easter. So people begin to fast. And fasolada is a very common food to eat during Lent. Something you might not know is that fasolada is our national dish and not moussaka or moussaka, like we say in Greek. Although uh, moussaka is very popular and every foreigner that comes talks about moussaka, the national dish is fasolada. Feta. Feta. Feta cheese. Feta. Feta cheese. Vale boliki feta sti salata. Vale. Boliki feta sti salata. Put a lot of feta cheese in the salad. Yeah, don't be stingy with your feta either. Go ahead and put a thick slice from the block of feta on top of the salad. And that's it for the 10 Greek foods of this video. What's your all time favorite Greek food and what would be your top 10 list of Greek foods? Let me know by leaving a comment and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you want more Greek lessons, check out greekpod101.com. Yahara! Hi everyone, this is Stefania and in this video you'll learn 10 phrases you always want to hear. We all need to hear some good words from time to time, a compliment or a motivational comment, so why not learn these phrases and spread some smiles around you? Let's start. Fenese kataplictiko simera. You look great today. Fenese kataplictiko simera. You look great today. This is a phrase to use when you refer to a man. When you refer to a woman, you should say Fenese kataplictiki simera. Mulipis. I miss you. Mulipis. I miss you. Be careful if you want to use this one-on-one -on -one with a friend. This might be taken the wrong way, as it sounds like an expression of your love feelings for someone. If you want to say to a close friend that you miss him or her, uh, try to make it more neutral by adding something in the end. For example, for a man you can say something like I miss you, buddy, or Mulipis filemu, I miss you, my friend. And for a woman, you can say, Mulipis refilenada, I miss you, girlfriend. Or Mulipis filimu, I miss you, my friend. Or even Mulipis rekoriti, I miss you, girl. Of course, in plural, there's no chance people will receive it as a love feeling expression. Ekanes pudea dilla, you did a great job. Έκανες σπουδαία δουλειά. You did a great job. Θα υπάρχει ένα bonus στο τέλος του μήνα. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. Θα υπάρχει ένα bonus στο τέλος του μήνα. There will be a bonus at the end of the month. Sweet. Είσαι ένας εξαιρετικός μάγειρας. You're an excellent cook. Είσαι ένας εξαιρετικός μάγειρας. You're an excellent cook. Again, this is for a male listener. If you are talking to a woman, you should say Είσαι μια εξαιρετική μαγείρισα. Κάνε ένα διάλειμμα, θα καθαρίσω εγώ σήμερα. Take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. Κάνε ένα διάλειμμα, θα καθαρίσω εγώ σήμερα. Take a break, I'll do the cleaning today. Don't mind if I do. 
Κέρδισες. You won. Κέρδισες. You won. Now that's something I like to hear. Especially if that's about the lottery. Είχες δίκιο. You were right. Είχες δίκιο. You were right. An answer to this could be Το ξέρω. I know. Σου έφερα κάτι ιδιαίτερο. I brought you something special. Σου έφερα κάτι ιδιαίτερο. I brought you something special. Well, that depends on what's special for you. Bravo. Well done. Bravo. Well done. This is borrowed from Italian, but in Greek we don't distinguish male from female for bravo, like Italians do with bravo and brava. It's always bravo in Greek, regardless of the number and gender of people it refers to. And that's it for the 10 phrases you always want to hear. Do you have any other phrases that you would like to hear? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned on GreekPod101.com for more videos like this. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Ω, oh, όλα αυτά για μένα? Μπα, δεν είναι τίποτα. Είναι το κανονικό μας φαγητό. Ναι, καλά. Δύο σαλάτες, τρία κυρία πιάτα και τέσσερα διαφορετικά ορεκτικά. Αυτό δεν είναι το κανονικό μας φαγητό. Δεν σου αρέσει, Ελένη. Όχι, όχι, μου αρέσει. Απλώς λέω... Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Τίποτα. Nothing. Κανονικό. Regular. Normal. Φαγητό. Food. Meal. Καλά. Well. Good. Σαλάτα. Salad. Διαφορετικά. Different. Αρέσει. To like. Όχι. No. Leo. To say. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Oh, όλα αυτά για μένα? Μπα, δεν είναι τίποτα. Είναι το κανονικό μας φαγητό. Ναι, καλά. Δύο σαλάτες, τρία κυρία πιάτα και τέσσερα διαφορετικά ορεκτικά. Αυτό δεν είναι το κανονικό μας φαγητό. Δεν σου αρέσει, Ελένη. Όχι, όχι, μου αρέσει. Απλώς λέω... This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hi everybody, Stefania here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Greek questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you use yota, ita, ypsilon, epsilon yota, omicron yota, and ypsilon yota? At the very beginning, the proper spelling of Greek words is something that has to be learned and memorized in the same way that you learned how to spell words in your own language. You need exposure and lots of practice. For example, in English, you memorize that it is tree and not tree, and it's tea and not tea. 
In Greek, though, things become somewhat easier as you gain knowledge of declensions and conjugations, especially when that E sound is at the end of an inflected word. Let's get into more detail. First, let's see what you have to know if that E sound is at the end of a word. Inflected words in Greek, such as articles, nouns, adjectives, and verbs, usually follow specific ending patterns when inflected. If you know the patterns, then the E sound at the end of such words is predictable. Here are a few generally safe rules. Number one, the plural forms of masculine and feminine os ending nouns, as well as masculine os ending adjectives and pronouns, will end in omicron yota. For example, ipsifi katametrode apo tin epitropi means the votes are being counted by the committee. Number two, words that end in ita are mainly feminine nouns and pronouns in the singular form and the plural form of neuter os ending nouns. Number three, words that end in yota are usually neuter nouns. For example, to skilis kavilakus ton kipo means the dog is digging up holes in the garden. Number four, the verb forms that have an e sound in the ending will be spelled with epsilon yota. The verb pliro, to fulfill, however, is an exception, as its e endings are spelled with omicron yota. Following up, what about ypsilon and ypsilon yota? The double vowel combination ypsilon yota is very rare, and it's not something you'll find at the end of a word. It's only used in the word ios, meaning sun, and its derivatives. For example, Iikos, of or related to a son. Iothesia or iothetisi, adoption. Iotheto, to adopt. And iothetimenos, iothetimeni, iothetimeno, adopted. As for the words that have an y in the ending that is not part of the u, av, or ev sounds, they are also not that many, so they can be easily learned. The most common ones are the is ending adjectives like vathis, deep, varis, heavy or strong. Elafris, light, ephthis, straight, makris, long, pahis, thick or fat, and polis, much or many, among others. Some nouns like asti, city, vradi, night, mis, muscle, dakri, tear, dichti, net, ishis, force, oxy, acid, and stahi, cob. Some adverbs like andikri or katandikri, opposite, metaxi, between, anametaxi, among, and poli, very or too much or a lot. The pronoun esi, you. And finally, some foreign names like xisi, freddy, vicky, and so on. Here are some sample sentences using words that are spelled with y. Tovradi canicrio. At night, it's cold. O cafés in a polivaris. The coffee is very strong. Finally, what if the E sound is not at the end of a word? In that case, you need to focus on the root or the roots of compound words, because the root might remind you of words you already know. For example, if you know how to spell ipsos, height, then all the words that begin with ipsos will be spelled with y at the beginning. For example, ipsometro, altitude, ipsilos, tall or high, ipsipedo, highland, ipsoma, elevation, ipsona, to raise, etc. Here are some sample sentences. Το χωριό βρίσκεται σε ipsometro 2000 metros. The village is located at an altitude of 2000 meters. Μη μου υψώνεις τη φωνή. Don't you raise your voice at me. However, there will always be times that you will simply have no idea how to correctly spell a word you hear. Memorization will always be part of the learning process. It's just something that you shouldn't get too frustrated about. Write as much and as best as you can without feeling ashamed, even when you know you might be making a lot of mistakes. With enough time, practice and study, you can and will perfect your spelling. How was the lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Yahara! Hi everybody, Stefania here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common Greek questions. The question for this lesson is, when do you keep the final ni of a word? 
Many students get confused when they see some Greek words that end in ni, sometimes omitting that final ni. For example, then and the, not. Mean and me, don't. Din and ti, the, and so on. So they ask me why this happens. I will explain the rule behind this in hopes that it will help all of you puzzled learners of Greek. Let's go into more detail. First, let's see what does the final ni rule say and which words get affected by it. The rule says that the feminine words tin, the or her, stin to the, aftin, her, and the particles then and mean keep that final ni when the next word begins either with a vowel or the consonants kappa, pi, taf, xi, psi, or the double consonant combinations b, d, g, c, and z. In any other case, they lose it. Min also loses its final ni before a punctuation mark or a scholarly participle in some standard expressions. For example, mi, don't, and horos mi kapnizondon, non-smoking area. The masculine words ton, the, or him, ston, to, in, or, at the, enan, one, afton, him, and the adverb san, as, or like, always keep that final ni. This rule applies to written speech only. In oral speech, many Greeks assimilate the final ni with the next word's initial letter, so ni is often not heard. Check out our assimilation videos in the Ultimate Greek Pronunciation Guide series on GreekPod101.com. Here are some sample sentences. Afton δεν τον ξέρω, I don't know him. Χρησιμοποιώ τη σκούπα. I use the broom. Following up, let's see why we keep the final knee in some words. The reason is simple. If we were to remove the final knee from the masculine words ton, ston, afton, and enan, they could be confused for neuter words, especially when they define a noun whose gender we are not sure of. So, when we would see somewhere written toneo, without knowing the context, we wouldn't be sure if it's a neuter adjective, meaning the new, or a masculine noun in the accusative case, meaning ton neo, the young man. Here are some more sample sentences. Ξέρεις τον νέο υπάλληλο? Do you know the new employee? Διαλέγω αυτόν και εκείνον. I choose him and him. Finally, there is one case where the current rule creates some uncertainty. By allowing us to write the, not, there might be cases where this negative particle might be mistaken for the conjunction the, roughly meaning however. For example, Ο δάσκαλος μιλούσε. Οι μαθητές δε γελούσαν. The teacher was talking. The students, however, were laughing. If the conjunction the would be mistaken for the verb's negation when reading, then the meaning would be different. The teacher was talking, the students weren't laughing. The problem is in written speech only, because in oral speech, the intonation helps make the distinction. This issue has created a lot of controversy among teachers, editors and linguists leaving students and other people confused. So some Greeks write then, always, while others follow the existing rule. I personally choose to always write then to avoid any confusion. Here are some sample sentences. Πρώτα γίνεται η συνέντευξη, κατόπιν δε γίνεται εξέταση. First, there's the interview. Later on, however, there's an examination. Δεν ξέρω τι να κάνω. I don't know what to do. Tip. If you have trouble remembering the rules consonant letters, here's a cheat phrase that will help you remember them. Τσάι στην κατάψυξη και ένα bulldog στο τζιπ. Meaning, tea in the freezer and a bulldog in the jeep. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but I hope this cheat phrase will help. How was the lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? 
If you can come up with any other cheat ideas, let me know in the comments. Yahara! Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Δηλαδή, αυτό δεν είναι το αεροδρόμιο της Αθήνας. Αυτό είναι το αεροδρόμιο της Αθήνας, όμως η περιοχή αυτή δεν είναι Αθήνα. Και το κέντρο είναι πολύ μακριά από εδώ. Περισσότερο από μια ώρα. Εδώ είναι Ελλάδα. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Αυτό δεν είναι. This is not. Κοπέλα. Girl. Girlfriend. Κέντρο. Center. Downtown. Είναι. Is. Μακριά. Far. Από. From. Εδώ. Here. Περισσότερο. More. Μια ώρα. One hour. Τώρα. Now. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Δηλαδή, αυτό δεν είναι το αεροδρόμιο της Αθήνας. Αυτό είναι το αεροδρόμιο της Αθήνας, όμως η περιοχή αυτή δεν είναι Αθήνα. Και το κέντρο είναι πολύ μακριά από εδώ. Περισσότερο από μια ώρα. Εδώ είναι Ελλάδα. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Petra, αυτή είναι η αδελφή μου, η Κωνσταντίνα, που ζει μαζί μας και τα παιδιά μου. Ο Γιώργος, ο Γιάννης και η Ελένη. Γεια, είμαι η Πέτρα. Καλώς ήρθες στην Αθήνα και στο σπίτι μας. Α, τα παιδιά είναι σχεδόν ενήλικες. Πόσο είναι τώρα? Ο μεγάλος γιος της Δανάης είναι 18. Ο μικρός είναι 15 και η κόρη της είναι 16. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Αυτή. This. Μου. My. Παιδί. Child. Γιος. Son. Κόρη. Daughter. Καλώς ήρθες. Welcome. Σπίτι. Home. 
house. Poso. How much? Tora. Now. Adelphi. Sister. Megalos. Big. Elder. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Πέτρα, αυτή είναι η αδελφή μου, η Κωνσταντίνα, που ζει μαζί μας και τα παιδιά μου. Ο Γιώργος, ο Γιάννης και η Ελένη. Γεια, yeah, είμαι η Πέτρα. Καλώς ήρθες στην Αθήνα και στο σπίτι μας. Α, ah, τα παιδιά είναι σχεδόν ενήλικες. Πόσο είναι τώρα? Ο μεγάλος γιος της Δανάης είναι 18, ο μικρός είναι 15 και η κόρη της είναι 16. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Greek ebook before it's gone.